Uh, cool. Amazing. Let's keep going with uh, with community questions here in the final Absolutely. 10 minutes or so. Um, Unpopular Onion has this question, and I'm going to add a little bit of my own preface to it. You guys have created something incredible. Like you said, you have this very fine, finely honed team of extremely experienced people making this engine that you have Baldur's Gate 3 in. Unpopular Onion is wondering, will there ever be a Dungeon Master tool with ways for people to create their custom campaigns and maps for their own D and D campaigns. Uh, so no, I don't think because that would be a huge undertaking in its own uh, to Massive. do it really. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, I wish we had it because it would make our jobs easier. Um, uh, so, uh, so no, uh, I don't think we're going to be, uh, going to be doing that. It's, uh, it's this type of, because it's, it would be very complicated. Is that something that it's would be left? Yeah. Is that is that something that might be left to like modders and stuff like that? So we will support modding. Uh, so as uh, after release, well, there will be a lot of support coming for modding. I mean, not right away because we're focusing on finishing game right now. Uh, but um, it will still be quite a challenge to do it. Uh, you do have the engine is there and it allows you to do a lot of stuff. Uh, really, a lot of stuff already. Um, but you, the, the problem is that the visuals that you have to put in are, are quite expensive to make in terms of time that you have to put in there. So uh, there's no generate me a dungeon thing. There's no easy way of rapidly putting a dungeon together. So you would have to spend time on it. You would need team to do it. Uh, so, um, but I'm not saying that's undoable. I mean, it's just the way that it is right now. Hmm. Okay. Speaking of that, and, and we, this is a, there's a couple of questions that we just had literally 50 plus people ask. And of course, this is super early. And I was even debating asking this because the game's not even out yet. Um, but have you guys alluded to or talked about more content coming in the future for Baldur's Gate 3 uh, or anything like that? Or are you just focusing on the release 100%? Uh, well, I'm not going to say 100%, but pretty much 100%. Definitely right now. <laughs> uh, so no, we've been uh, obviously, I mean, like... Um, we're studio like any other, right? So we already know what we're going to do next, uh, but we haven't alluded it to it at all uh, okay. externally. Uh, I, I don't think so. Awesome. Uh, just a quick mechanical question to slide in there. Uh, this is from LK Biohazard on Twitter. Will it be possible to trigger more than one companion scene per night at the camp? Currently in EA, due to the one limit, it can cause sometimes uh, a scene to be missed. <laughs> So uh, the camp system has been uh, upgraded uh, significantly. Um, you got to be careful in what you think of as a missed night because people have this completionist view, uh, yes. and and you can't, you, ca you just can't. This game doesn't allow you to be completionist because you just can't see everything. Uh, so what it does is, for instance, I'll give you a really simple example. In one of the early nights that you have in early access. There's a moment where uh, I think it's a uh, second night or something like that. And you can talk uh, to Shadowheart or Starn or Gale or whoever is in your camp and they'll have an extensive dialogue. And then if you go talk to Shadowheart, she'll say, what were you two talking about? Right? If you would have gone to Shadowheart, she would have had her dialogue and nobody else would have said, what were you two talking about? Right? So you would already have to do it in the right sequence just to be able to get that moment with her uh and to, to 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 consume all of the content it's full of those things right it's full of things where you're never going to see um things because they react to what you did uh and uh, the the uh, trying to see everything is just not going to work what i can tell you is that the game has systems in place and people will discover what they are um to make sure that if there's something that was important you will not miss it uh, it will always make sure that you see everything that you need to see uh it's good to know. discover, but I don't want to. How many times do I got to play this? <laughs> How many times do I got to play this goddamn game to see everything? <laughs> um, it's going to be very hard, actually. I don't think there's uh, anybody uh, that's seen everything, and unless you actually really use our debug tools, uh, so because um, it's it's made to. I I, I use this uh, analogy. Where I say it's like we, what we try to do is because it's not cinematic, we try to make a screenplay tailored to your play. A screenplay that's made for you specifically on your play session, where you get movie, interactive movie with a whole bunch of systemic gameplay in there that is literally giving you what you should be getting based on what you've been doing. 
And I don't think there's been a lot of RPGs like that before. I can't, I can't think of one because I would be all over it right now. So at least at the level that we've done it. Um, and so we'll see. I mean, if that works out and you guys think the same thing, definitely let me know. Uh, so uh, because it's what we try to, it's what we try to do. It's, we try to say when you, you think about all the adventures that you've had, you would say, yeah, that was actually because it was me. Uh, and that's what I did. And then when uh, you talk to each other, you say, holy shit, that didn't happen to me at all. Right. Well, that's probably because you didn't do these things. You did different things. And that's how, in my ideal version of RPGs, that's how it should be. Right. Mm. So you get this really immersive narrative experience uh, where you're free to do whatever shenanigans you want, but you always get a story that's really um, taking you on a really fantastic ride, specifically there to the things that you have done. Awesome. That's goal. Yeah. Yeah. Exciting. Uh, I think we can do one or two more. Depending on okay, the this is a quick one. This is more of just a, something the community was wondering. I saw this question was like, oh man, now I'm curious too. This is from Pure Establishment on Reddit. The question I have to ask Sven is what exactly he was talking about when back in an interview, he said that he had this huge secret for years. The quote, <sighs> I got a thing I can't talk about. So I've been sitting on this for <sighs> years already. So you already know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I know what it is. I know, also know what I meant. <laughs> have you divulged that secret? I have, yes. Was it the dark urge? No, it was beer sex. No, no, it was. It was <laughs> <laughs> Six years ago, <laughs> he just wanted to see what would happen if you included it in the game. He wanted to see that two is animals. That is serious <laughs> PR planning. <laughs> well done to I'm you just, and the team. No, no, no. Just, <laughs> right like, before release, they're gonna like, get. <laughs> I'm seeing in my head like the voiceover of the no clip documentary. Be like, it all started. In a very weird way. Yeah, is Finn <laughs> just sitting sex. in a zoo like, or something like that? Baldur's Gate 3. Uh, He's like, <laughs> I have an idea. <laughs> no, it was a dark urge. It was indeed a dark urge. Yeah. Cool. That was the, the dark it. urge. That was uh, something I always wanted to put in a game. And so and uh, the team embraced it. They came up with a really cool version of it. And you'll see uh, it fits really well. It addresses a lot of stuff. That I've seen people talk about that I couldn't talk about. Ah. Uh, so I, I enjoy, um, yeah, I enjoy it being in there now. So, and it's cool. But I, as much as I hate to say it, I wouldn't actually recommend it for people that play the first time. Uh, really? Really? Um, yeah. Uh, people will, I know. I mean, but I, I wouldn't. Uh, but it's, it's fine. It's, um, it just gives you, because you, you get different versions of the story. Um, and, and there, there's a variety of things that are going to happen uh, where you you could have had something completely different if you were in Dark Urge, right? And it's nice to know how this is how the story goes. I'm the Dark Urge now. I get a completely different perspective on it. Holy shit. Uh, there, there's, a, there's, there's this holy shit moment that comes, but works better if you already know the first version around. I don't want to diss the Dark sure, Urge. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, okay. it's, a, it's a problem with the Avatar versions. The Avatar versions are actually really cool. Uh, so what we call, we meant um, avatar version, I mean, your origin system where you can become a character and see it through their perspective, but they work better if you play the game already once, because then you see it through their eyes and then you say, what was, what was Shadowheart thinking the first time she saw you, right? So, and now, you know, when you're in their head, because then you're talking to yourself. And so, but you know, some of their secrets also, uh, because it's you, so you know the secret. So it's better if you first recruit them as companions. And then afterwards, when you know the secret, you go back and say, okay, well, what does it mean if I have these things in my, in my head? That's why we add these origins for replay value. Uh, yeah, I was going to uh, say, cool. yeah. as a quick follow-up, um, would you recommend a custom character or an origin character over your very first character? I would always pick a custom uh, yeah. and, and discover my companions. I, um, I think the origins come into play when you replay it. That said, there's nothing wrong with picking an origin. Right. It's just to make um, the entire origin system is about where do you put the camera, right? And whose head do you put the camera on the same thing? It's the reason why all these things work. If the three of you are going to play as origins and you play together, you're going to have a good time. You're just going to have and uh, you're going to be in and uh, you might be in competing situations also where your interests don't align with one another, especially from your origin background, which is fun uh, and, and works well. So, uh, but that's, yeah, you, you'll discover all, all this for yourselves very soon if everything goes well. 
Awesome. Last super quick follow up on that. Um, I know that traditionally origin characters are kind of locked or, or their, their classes are kind of uh, very much a part of their character. Will you be able to respect them similar to the other characters as well? Yeah, you, have, uh, you can respect everything and you can respect through the game also. Uh, there's a gold price to be paid, uh, but you can uh, respect uh, anybody. Uh, the only things that are actually locked in are the um, the subclasses of uh, two of our origin characters when you start playing, uh, mm -hmm. when you recruit them, but the, um, you can respect in any case. So it doesn't really matter. Right. It's just about in their head, they will always have that in their background. That's important to say, like, okay. Will will okay. always be a warlock. He will, because his story doesn't work if he wasn't a warlock. Alison will be... always be a druid. Yes, exactly. But <laughs> not necessarily. And, uh, but he will, even if you respect him, he will still be a druid. Uh, now. Nah. Okay. Because otherwise that would become impossible. Right, right. And with those two little specific side classes, if you were to spec respec out of them, you could respect back into them on those two characters. They're not gone forever if you respect out of them. No, 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 no. You can you can just keep on respecing. And uh, you're um, you, you meet a character that allows you that gives you a narrative reason why you can respec, and so you can just go and talk to that character, and then it'll say, "Hello, I want to respec." And says this this amount of gold, please. He said, "I don't have any gold. Well, don't bother me then." And then <laughs> Fair enough. Awesome. Fair enough. Uh, That's final, it for me. Yeah, final yeah, question Thanks for everyone me. who submitted questions. Yeah, yeah thank you so much uh, for mm -hmm. one putting that thread out and everyone else that there was like 200, 300 responses on Reddit. It was, oh, yeah. it was wild. People are <laughs> very excited for the game and had a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. uh, final question for me is what what's the next like week look like for you? Is it heads down? Finish, I mean, you submitted the game, you said today, but you're still doing some bug fixes, but are yeah, you in so the office the most... normal times? Like everything normal? Longer days than than usual, but it's a triage really. Uh, you always decide what do we put into the final game, what do we leave for a patch. Uh, you have these lists that accumulate, and so it's uh, the triage process. It's the most boring thing in the universe. Uh, it's really not a lot of fun. <laughs> but it has to happen. It's an important part of release. Uh, so, but that's been life. Uh, I've been playing a lot, so I've been playing a lot also. The entire team is playing right now, anyway. Uh, so everybody's playing uh, what they've been working on for all this time. Uh, and so basically as a, as a final big beta test, uh, for sure issues will come up and there will be panic, uh, everything that's associated with the release. Uh, How it goes. Like, uh, yeah. Is, is, yeah, exactly. is launch day just a 24 hour whirlwind for you where sitting you by the bat phone waiting it, for the call. <laughs> yeah. So, well, we, we, so we have two. It's a funny, it's a really good question because our studio heads have been asking this the entire time. What do we do? Do we do a big party? Don't we do a big party? Do we do a big party? Don't we do a big party? So I don't know. I mean, like if there's something that we missed. Uh, so typically when you release something, there's always a hot fix because there's something that you missed and you don't know what it's going to be. It's like device driver 320,000 point A does not work. And it's like 5% of the internet has it. Do something. And then uh, that kind of thing. So that's the hot fix process. Um, so we have two release parties planned. We have one for the release date and one a week later. The one a week later. The is, party, uh, the, actual the, party. <laughs> the actual party. The actual party. The, the one that do, you can, do. you know, actually drink yeah. at. Kind yeah, of and relax. Yeah, let loose yeah. a little bit. Yeah. 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 And uh, <laughs> the day itself, depending on how it goes, we'll see. We don't know. We actually really, uh, I mean, like, this is a huge game. It's very large. Sure. Right? So uh, it's, yeah, it's large. So we don't know. I we'll think it, see. I think I speak for a lot of us. It still blows our mind that with a game this large, that you guys were like, you know what? We're gonna do this a month earlier than we anticipated. Like it's 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 mind blowing. That that sets a lot of you know hopefully great expectations on how you feel about the state of the game. So yeah, we're very uh, yeah. very excited for sure. We were also late actually, and so that's uh, yeah, it's it's, it's nice. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> we're early in our specific. You said it, not <laughs> us. You said it. <laughs> we were gonna just leave that a little, you know, amorphous. But that's yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. No, no, yeah. And it, no, it was also the split between the console and PC that made it possible. Yeah. Uh, so uh, moving the console later uh, suddenly removed a bunch of pressure that allowed us to release the PC version early. So all right, find out very soon. Cool. Uh, yeah. Zeke, cool. you got any final questions? I had one. Yeah, one last question. Um, it, will it be optimized for Steam Deck? Just, I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> you had to ask. You know, you got, you got to get that in. Uh, 
Fuck, yeah. I felt so dumb, dude. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> like a, just a that's, it that's okay. I, it happens. No, there's a, there's, a, the, there's a team working on it, Zeke. So they're um, <laughs> uh, so they're they're trying to make they're trying to figure out what the right settings are because uh, they are. Uh, just let them know that Zeke really wants it. He has. Yeah. They got to ask mm. three. Like Zeke is a huge Steam yeah. Deck fan, and he really needs it ported uh, immediately. I'll, uh, immediately. I'll uh, I'll make sure that they that they know they're very motivated to do it. Fantastic.